spell deals four <laughs> damage. <laughs> I think it'd be great. I'd love that. Let's do it. Yeah, only if you could go completely outside the box and then just put in like card game things outside of just the cards themselves. Mm -hmm. So just like a card that says GG and it just makes your opponent rage or something. Like, <laughs> you know, some, something like that, right? Just go completely yeah. out of the box. But enough of our random ramblings. Let's get on to this game number one here. Warmer on that weapon rogue on the top and Tice on the priest. And again, if you are just joining us at this exact moment, Tice effectively just needs to win with his priest here. It's the only real deck that matters for him. Yeah, and he's already, I think, from turn one, going to have to get incredibly creative as to how this matchup is won. And um, because, you know, normal things aren't going to pan out. He can just go renew and palm reading um, an Onyx Mage Scribe, Draconic Studies into Onyx Mage Scribe, all that kind of business. But he doesn't play any of that stuff naturally in his deck. There's no way that he can just, you know, infinite greed um, to begin with. And so... He is going to start off just by saying, okay, I draw ooze at some point in this game, right? Let's just take that as a given. Because if I don't do that, then there's just no way I win this matchup. That's just step one. Rogue will beat me if I don't draw ooze. At that point, how do I outlast a C'Thun? And how do I outlast a C'Thun that's probably coming down quite early? It'll be delayed by a few turns if you um, ooze away like the Silverleaf poison weapon. But probably by turn 12, turn 13, something like that, right? You're probably going to be yeah. expecting to get Cthuned in the face. So how on earth do you plan to beat that as a low-value priest? And I think keeping Mind Render Alusha is probably just about the right amount of stupid that might work out, right? And just say my opponent messes up and just leaves a Cthune piece in their hand at some point over the course of the game, and I'm able to swipe it away and, from them. And going a little bit further than that as well, it might not even be so much that Warmer messes up, but with the rate in which this deck draws cards, he could just end up drawing back-to-back -back Cthune pieces, and he doesn't have the mana to use them both. So there's even that aspect, right? It's not like a slower, say, control warrior with Cthune in it that often you join so slowly that you can just play one a turn and be okay. Imagine here, Tice is just looking at this flash heal, right? Just more heal, zero mana, ticks boxes. Yep, it's a Sethic cycle as well if he's going to pick up Sethic, so definitely on board with that. East number one, that looked like. It certainly was. Well, I'm going to rip the passage, looking for the weapon. That looks like Shank. It is indeed. The Warmer is off to the races. And just winding back a little bit, what do you think the reason is for Tice not playing uh, Studies? Is it purely because he just couldn't cast a, well, play a dragon anyway? He's just saving it for next turn, or is there anything deeper? No, I don't think so. It's just there's no particular reason to play it, right? It costs zero, so he might as well just seek one extra turn's information oh. as to whether or not he's going to play it in this spot. Looks like it's going to be just a Zyrella turn potentially here, right? Just to get a minion on board, stop this two, two, just whacking him in the face every turn. Possible, yeah. I was interested then in actually opening the Draconic Studies first, though. Because hmm. at that point, if you hit um, Onyx Mage Scribe, right, it would cost five. You could then coin it out and then use another zero mana spell just to proc it immediately on the, the following turn. Oh, sorry, on the after uh, you played the coin. I guess you can still do that, right, with Flash Heal? He can, yeah, 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 but I'm saying, like, in terms of overall sequencing, I think that's what I would have started with this turn, but if he's going Zyrella, he's going Zyrella, that's fine. Did go for the palm reading as well. I was a tiny bit interested in the spirits as well as a choice, just because there are some, like, say, taunt minions you can get as well that could be pretty nice, and sometimes yeah. in this matchup there are turns that you want to, like, fill out, if that makes sense. And I guess talking of silliness right at the start of the match, that is another thing that could have happened, right? Because Tice is playing Insight. You could, like, Insight Elusha to do things a little bit quicker if it's corrupted, of course. So not going to happen this game, of course, because he kept in his opening hand, but just one thing that can happen.
Yeah, he will now corrupt that insight with the palm reading, as it looks like he's going for. Mm -hmm. If he hits what? Ogamance is probably the best draw, right? Yes, that sounds about right. Yeah, Psyche Split, if he does get an Ogamancer, for example, then Psyche Split on that would be huge, if it's not dealt with. You don't pick the it does drop a Raised Dead here, which I find interesting. I was about to say, the uh, Raised Dead pool right now is very uninspiring, with uh, just one Maker and Zyrella in there, but Tice choosing just to get something in play this turn. Again, just to keep an eye on the Alusha plan, uh, Tice holding onto the coin means he can do that turn, just that one turn quicker as well, which I'm Very sure true. Which I'm sure Wama will be keeping an eye on too. You always got to be aware when your opponent still can't access that coin, but still, sometimes he won't be able to stop it happening himself. But he doesn't have any pieces in hand yet. Yeah, one already drawn and played. The heart coming down to clear up the Zyrella previously. You still have to be careful as well because, you know, we, we can obviously get tunneled on uh, Cthulhu pieces here, but there's a lot of other valuable cards in his deck that he will not be wanting to get Alushid away in various positions. Particularly with all of those poisons. He doesn't play the uh, Cloak of Shadows, of course, which is something else that you do have to look out for with my render Alusha in the yeah. matchup sometimes. Priest just being able to scam that free turn with the Cloak of Shadows themselves is sometimes an enormous deal. Not a concern in Wama's build of the deck. Yeah, Blade Master. Hmm. I've been one of the worst draws, actually, <laughs> you could have. Yeah. I guess, like, one benefit is, for example, like, next turn, you could play it with Psyche Split and just have two big minions. Yeah, they're not that big, though, are they? That's the problem. Yeah. But I guess by big, I mean, like, not that easy to kill in one swing for Warmer, at least right now. Yeah. So they just stick around. The end is near. You are right, though. The pressure's definitely on Ties to do creative things, right? And I think this is clearly showing that <laughs> he, he's well aware of that himself. Yep. Let's get that done. Yep, play that card before your opponent does it for you. Can't imagine it doesn't get used here, right? Yeah. It's just too perfect. I know he has the Malevolent Strike to just do it cheaper, but also what else is he actually spending his mana on this turn? Plus the Cthune versus Lucia factor that we've been talking about for the entire game. Plus the fact that there is that kept card on the extreme far left of your yeah. opponent's hand that they have shown absolutely no sign of interacting with just yet. Is he just doing it? Okay, I, th I thought I was just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to have a look. Let's just see if I can win the game. Goes ahead and drops the Alex Alexstrasza instead, but clearly still multiple options in hand here for Wama to be able to take care of things here. Malevolent Strike is the extra card coming into the deck. Probably the best viewed card is the direct replacement for the Cloak of Shadows, right? Those two Malevolent mm. Strikes coming in in place of the Cloaks and just giving that extra removal. Raise dead Alex, let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. One maker into another Draconic Studies, into another Alex Straza. I'm seeing a plan coming together. This is it, actually. This is actually kind of smart, because actually when you break it down, this is the big weakness of this version of the deck, isn't it? Of this version of Rogue, it's burn damage. Right. Because, because of they, no cloak. Because of no cloak. They play no healing. The deck just classically doesn't. But when you remove Cloak of Shadows, they don't have any way to interact with you just pointing damage at their face. I think, you know, it's a big reason why we've seen Wama consistently banning Mage throughout the entire week uh, up until this point, because his lineup just doesn't really right. interact particularly well with that. And uh, you can see the way this is going. There's another Alex Straza coming here, which puts Wama all the way down to 12. Um, but playing minions over and over doesn't actually achieve all that much because of Paralytic Poison. I was talking about that earlier, right? The, when you have Cthune in your deck, you can kind of use your weapon rogue weapon as infinite removal with Paralytic Poison. 
if they can just point damage at your face over and over again, there's actually no cards in your deck that play around that. Right. Mama can clear this board up, right? He has the tools to do so. It just leaves him yep. with more or less nothing left. Yep. He is going to be praying for a cutting class off the top. Follow this up. Second secret passage, even. Silver leaf poison he'll take. Ooh. Card draw, basically, is what I'm getting at here, Raven. He needs some card draw. <laughs> needs some cards. Sometimes card draw. It's card draw. And suddenly, though, there's additional Alusha fears, right? Wicked yep. Stab being in yep. hand, for example, is, is a problem. Yep. That's a card warmer can't just sit in hand anymore. Like, it's getting a little bit scary. But now with Silverleaf, Paralytic, and Deadly, Wama can start to clear this up if he would like to. He can also just jam the uh, Prize Plunderer if he wants to start pushing damage of his own, which he does. It's the danger, though, with uh, Silverleaf Poison. That's the card that you don't really have control over the card draw to an extent. Uh, from this point onwards, he will be able to swing first if he wants to and then assess the state of the hand. But now there is considerable danger yeah. with the Alusha on the other side. Even just start palm reading and see if you can get raised dead for Tice and he gets another Alex. <laughs> Weirdly, if Tice were to, like, smite down this board and then play Alusha, he'd probably win the game from that point because the self-sharpening sword is lethal over time, right? If Tice right. can then survive long enough to get to that point. Insight for a potential Ogomancer couldn't be played this turn, though. Power Word Fortitude's going to make this a problem. Does have Holy Smite, of course, for uh, to kill off the Scorpid on the other side. Yeah, remember the ooze as well. Every insight is a potential draw for that Acidic Swamp ooze, which is an insane deal at this point as well. Spreading the threats. He's going to smite the more dangerous minion. Yeah, and I like the hysteria use here as well. Why, why yep. take two damage to face, right? It's just no point. Agreed. Is that the final Cthulhu piece? No, I don't think so. I think there's one more after this. Okay. Oh, no, it might be. He played I, right? He yes. did play I as well. Played yes, I. I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, okay. I think you're right. Last time I ever... Yeah, it is. You can see it there. Three out of four on screen. Yep. yep. Boom. Comes four out of four. Insta Cthulhu! Oh my goodness, and no way the Alusha can interact with that. There's super niche scenarios where it's like you've incited your Alusha, but even then, like, they have to have coin in their hand or something nonsense right. over on the other side. Or like, like got an Octobot pocket somehow or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like, some utter know. nonsense, yeah. I just got the good payout here, though. Yes, he did, which means now he has Sethic out for the game with Apotheosis coming down here. That's three damage. Is there a way to get up to seven cheaply enough here? Oh. Not sure there is. Really? That went face and not minion. Okay. Fair enough. He's still oh. dead. I think at this point he may as well play Lucia, right? Try and find the extra turn. Yeah, I mean, what... Well, well, does heal face do anything relevant here? I don't know. Your opponent's barely got any cards. It's doubtless going to be massive burst anywhere. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, where'd the heal go? <laughs> so he's going back up to 28. That's 31, 35. So yeah, 8 from the weapon, 30 from the Cthune. This looks like lethal wow. to me, and I think Tice might be a little bit surprised at the fact that there is just 30 damage in hand right now from Wama. Wama just... That's it. Let me just Crack the check. neck. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Tice is like, oh, okay. 
Fair enough. That, though, must have been extremely scary for Wama because if he just lost the first game to Priest instantly, this series gets incredibly difficult for him. And honestly, without literally just ripping the Cthulhu off the top, he was in massive trouble. He was. He was in, in huge trouble, yeah, and it really made a weakness of the deck very apparent. Uh, which is it just can't take damage. Um, it's not a problem. If you just play minions and Wama's allowed to just hit them on his own terms um, by just crashing his weapon into it, no problem. Paralytic Poison will clear that up, no right. problem whatsoever. But if you actually have damage in your hand, that's where it becomes an enormous problem. And I was advocating coin into, you know, Onyx Mage Scribe kind of things earlier on in the game, um, whereas Tice held onto that coin long term for an Alexstrasza, which he then discovered. Um, if he'd put the time in and kind of thought of that out already, and that was something that he was playing to very deliberately, then I just clap my hands. That's very, very smart, and I think that absolutely is probably the best way through the matchup. And it certainly made things very, very exciting towards the end there, because with uh, maybe a, an earlier Sethic, maybe rolling a few extra buffs, maybe there was a, a stab where he could, uh, literally a stab where he could have played a Lucia for like a wicked stab in his opponent's hand at some point over the course of the game to try and get it done. We can see that wouldn't have been the reality but it's something that he always had the opportunity to go for. But yeah, in the end, it was Wama just hitting Cthoon with, what, 12, 13 cards left remaining in his deck. I said it was going to come early. That was not the way I was expecting it to. Like, on average, that's probably about the turn where he does play Cthoon because his deck still had two cutting class, Silver Leaf Poison, Second Secret Passage, all of that stuff left remaining in there, which would have drawn through those remaining 12 cards incredibly rapidly if he'd have picked them up early. But he just drew all the Cthune pieces mm. one by one and then it, played Cthune all in the top half of his deck. It is pretty, pretty interesting outrageous. though, because although of course we're biased, like we could see the hand, we knew the Cthune was there, but yeah. if Tice just gave, uh, gave Wama just the, the insight for a turn, yeah. Then it's unlikely he can draw. He would have to draw something pretty ludicrous to, like, for example, heal him. But there's like no removal. He used double hysteria and so on. So then, like, yeah. his board sticks, and then he just pushes the final damage, regardless of what's in Wama's hand, right? So yeah, very interesting game there. A pretty pretty close one. I'm sure Wama's just uh, maybe just wiping a bit of sweat off his brow here, as that looked like it could have gone downhill very very quickly indeed. But we are moving on to game number two. And Tyus is actually switching off his priest and going for mage now as uh, Wama locks in his warrior. Yeah, he's had quite enough of that, actually. He wants to win a game now. <laughs> um, he's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Wama is going to this uh, control warrior which we've uh, seen be fairly successful um, so far. I do think it's a reasonable deck in the metagame overall. I know a lot of the America's players are relying on this quite heavily as well. Uh, different builds, um, but you know, still a reasonable deck to bring to the party. Um, we saw Wama having success with it outside of the Priest matchup uh, yesterday to even be in this position. So um, I think it'll be an interesting one to see here against uh, Spell Mage, because I think Control Warrior popped up as a potential counter to the almighty Spell Mage as it was back in the day of uh, you know two mana encounters flow two mana deck of lunacy I think that was very quickly slapped down it's like no that's nonsense like once the mage players have figured out that you play Bulwark of Azanoth it's not a difficult card to deal with right like we can figure it out it's nowhere near as big brain as you think it is and then over time I think it's become a very very strong matchup uh, for the mage overall so we'll see if uh, Tice can get out of this one with his skin intact yeah and I am still just interested to continue to see how mage will or won't develop uh, if if it'll change a lot or not with the mini set, if everyone's still going to stick to Spell Mage, because as you said just recently, and I think for most people I've even spoken to about it outside of GM, it just hasn't been felt feeling like it's been getting the same level of job done. Uh, yeah. So let's see if we can get something done here right now for Tice. Canter's float, of course, on turn two, ready for him. Warmer on the other hand, not got a bad opening, honestly, just a lot of playables in the uh, the early game here. There's a good boy. Tice knows what he's doing. Thank okay. <laughs> Wama throwing out the emote because he thinks Tice's hand has whiffed, having seen him now hero power on turn two. But he is going to continue now to... Uh, actually, he's going to throw out the combustion. Okay, fair enough. But he is just greeding this encounter's flow so he right. can play it after the deck of lunacy on turn four. Therefore, giving him the full power 
power deck of Lunacy, but discounting the cards after the fact. Not only giving him the most powerful variations of cards in his deck, but also cheating the most mana by doing it in, uh, in this order. And very firmly getting Subtle's seal of approval of how to play this hand. <laughs> Uh, and now he knows. One for me, one for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay, I've never seen this interaction before. This is great. I'm having a good time. It retains the discount, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, this yeah, is good. Yeah. This is really good. Okay, I had not considered this at all. I was about to say, Wama kind of has the nuts here with Double South Sea Scoundrel just because it's so much pressure. That's what Tice was banking on, right? There being so little pressure on the other side of the board. Right. He can afford to do it this greedy way. Because normally you can't afford to do this, right? It is the ideal. It is objectively the best, most powerful thing that you can do with your cards. The problem is whether you can afford to float turn two, turn three, turn four, and then arguably turn five as well as you play in Canada as flow to discount your deck further. Against Control Worry, you can probably do that. But if they're putting five fives down on the other side of the board, maybe not. I had not considered the interaction of that Wama just steals the cards and retains the deck of Lunacy discount from the other side as well, which is a really, really huge deal, honestly. <laughs> oh, this is a fun game mode. Let's make this a brawl yep. or something. Yeah, you start start of the game, you can either pick the deck of Lunacy and 30 Spells deck, or the 30 South Sea Scouts yes. deck. <laughs> yeah. Wama's just loving life right now. Like, look at this Control Warrior board. This is how yep. you play Control Warrior. Control the face. <laughs> Ice does have Blessing of Authority in his hand, though, so he can make this uh, babbling book pretty dangerous. Yeah, there's still just so much power on the other side of the board, though. I think Tice might be scrambling even just for devolving missiles at this point. Doesn't find it. He's going to have to use the blessing. Oh. Is he just going to die? It's close, right? Because Wama can coin that Grand Slam. Wait. Yes, okay, so this is 15 goes face. See, Tyson. So, ten. And every minion has three health, so you may as well just coin that Grand Slam now. <laughs> Does he have to? Can he not preserve it for lethal? Well, the. He, he can. Uh, what? And just do this and clear the board? Yeah. Then, but then isn't Tyson going to that Grand Slam on an empty board then? And then, uh, fair, again, your yeah. Grand Slam won't do as much because there's a board? Can you just sort of like half tempo clear, like just double shield slam here or something? Well, that's true. It's possible, isn't it? Could still whip in you... the um, the. Oh, I've just forgot the name of the card. Wonder. Stage dive, sorry, as well. Yeah, I was gonna say you can stage dive for the Kargath, right? And potentially go. You can go stage dive Kargath shield slam shield slam, and then that grand slam next turn for potential lethal. I think I like that more. It's so much clear still, right? You can get a value trade with the card game. Well, that's also why I was liking the Nagrand Slam, because the majority of trades that could happen would also be value trades, which still makes Tice's Nagrand Slam worse. But this has to be better, But, but right? yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree this is better, yes. I definitely agree this is better. It's just where I thought initially with Nagrand. Oh! Three mana flame strike. That's the juice. Does mean he can't that Grand Slam, though. I think he'll take it. Oh yeah, he's fonting. Interesting. I was thinking just uh, three mana flame strike, four mana water elemental. Call it a turn. Let's hit Varden. Presents some very appealing options. Unforgiving struggle. I am Morbidil. It has to be Negran now, right? Now you come on and slam, yeah. Yeah. Mainly because he's seen that Font of Power's been played. He knows Tice has a Negran slam, so if he ends the turn with an empty board, Tice just banks all the damage himself. 
exactly that's the problem you can't really afford to greed this for 12 to face for much longer because you're just going to give the opportunity over to your opponent and it's not bad i think he'll take six damage to face he does play weapons in the deck that can finish this off trade chaos nova nagran slam not perfect but it's close uh yeah could throw the soul rend in there as well right if you really did want to make it perfect true all in due time. Does he ever just say hard pass and just flame strikes? I don't think so. No, okay. no, I, I think with or without the soul rend, the uh, the Nagran slam play is a lot stronger. Yep, got the trade on the first one. Now Outrider's Axe is card. Okay, Warcash is also the card. Outrider's Axe is still the card. <laughs> I think you take this turn to, like, Barrel of Minefield or something, yes. though, right? Get the clear. I was, I was just going to say that. The only... <laughs> Oh, it's so hard, though, because then you still kind of delay the whole game by an extra turn, right? I don't want to do that. Oh, I think I'd go weapon phase. Oh! That has to be wrong. I think you're so favored in this game if you just clear this board. I don't think you have to give your opponent outs from this position. But you give them a whole turn to get more outs, right? That's the scale. Yeah, but I th honestly, I think like buffing this board. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm a one story up with this game. All right, well, I'm just says, Jesus, take the wheel. And now it's up to Tice to try and piece this one together. And currently, he cannot. He has 14 and cram session. Oh! <laughs> oh, insane. Oh, what a ridiculous game, Raven. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Personally, I still, like, you know, obviously now it's after the fact it's going to sound results-oriented, but, you know... Yeah, stop being results oriented, yeah, it's all. <laughs> oh, it's all gone? I th okay, it's all gone, which means I am correct. Oh no, he's back, damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was um, a, a really, really strange way for that game to end. And regardless of which side of the fence you fall on with that decision from Warmer, there were good reasons, I guess, for both. But yeah, the, uh, the, the pull off the end there for, for Tys, just having given him lethal was absolutely huge. Yeah, still very much in favor of clearing myself if the... Uh... Oh, I think we might have lost Sotl again because I can't hear him. I'll just keep talking, say me and Wama were correct and we just got unlucky overall. Um, but no, that was, uh, it was, the option to clear was there, of course, and that would have removed that one out from Tys. My only worry again on, on that, like this side, is that, well, if Tys just plays another board generation, then Wama's in the same position once again, and then the game just extends even further. Am I back? Can you hear me? I now? can hear you Hello, now. Raven. Earth to Raven. Okay, good. Wait, why am I not on Earth? <laughs> okay, Sotl's out. I'm just going to keep talking. Uh, he is going to be moving over to his control warrior. We are going to hopefully get Sotl back. And if he decides to grace us with his presence for longer than a few seconds, that'll be great. But it is going to be this warrior going up against uh, this warlock here from Warmer. And again, Interesting Warlock list, we did touch on it yesterday when we saw Wama play. It is, of course, there to counter Priest, but it has some of uh, additional tech cards in it too to help out, even more so than the already reasonably favoured matchup of Control Warlock, where that philosophy's in there with the Ticketus. We did see this happen, where the double, double Ticketus was an option uh, going forward for Wama. So 
The, the good plays and the greedy plays are there, but the big question is, are the greedy plays going to be enough when it goes up against Rush Warrior from Tice? Um, Sol looks very frozen in time there, which is staring off into the distance, which is making me laugh. Uh, but let's check out uh, Tice's Rush Warrior again. Fairly standard, not running some of the tech cards that we saw from uh, from Bly's earlier on with the double Neo fights. All that's out the window. Tice bringing a much more standard version with the double tent trashers which were kind of just messed with a little bit earlier on in the development of this deck but i think have really just become a staple if you want to play the standard version because the card does often come out earlier than you would expect with the addition of of course ganarg uh, as well as bumper car and crab riders just all helping the tent trasher kind of get cheated out a little bit earlier so big question really here is whether tice uh, on this rush warrior can put too much pressure on against Warmer's Warlock, especially since that Warlock is tech to be even more Counter Priest than it already is. Hello, hello. I have returned once again. Can you hear me now, Rick? It's just time. I can hear you. I could hear you always just for a couple of seconds, so hopefully you're still with us for more than a minute now. Okay, after this couple of seconds, do you continue to hear me? I am continuing to hear you, yeah, yes. Yeah, well... We might be well, okay. Well, let's move on. I'm sure you broke down this matchup with the greatest of skill, finesse, and depth of knowledge, Raven. So I'm sure there's nothing more I would have needed to add. But Not at all. So we are going to get into Rush Warrior versus the uh, Control Warlock, which honestly, for a normal Control Warlock, isn't that bad of a matchup. Again, as I'm sure Raven has been telling you. But Wama's extreme greedy version will have a little bit more of an uphill struggle, I'm sure. Yeah, and Tice has got off to a decent start there. Gets the Ganag out nice and early. <laughs> Wama just getting the old turn to a uh, Soul Fragment draw. Unfortunate for him there. Not quite as good a hand, though, as we saw from Warmer the other day, right? Where he just drew the good half of right. his deck in an aggro matchup. Uh, so he... Uh, a few sticking points with just that Ticketus and that Jaraxxus in hand. Sol replied to me, I'm scared that you've got again. Sorry. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, Don't I, be I, silent I for periods of time now. <laughs> it's I not loud. I'm very... I'm very considered. I will have these moments of, of silence, Raven. You should be well used to them. Fine. Yes, but not when you have chain disconnected for the past few <laughs> minutes. That's not fair. So I was just going to say that I think this is a little bit inflated, but just going back to the point of how um, Control Warlock is a reasonable matchup overall against Warrior. Uh, just using GM stats, which of course is you know a very small sample size, but also arguably the, high, the highest level of play that we have available. Um, Control Warlock is almost 90% against Rush Warrior oh, um, overall, okay. which is kind of absurd. I do not by any means think that is fully reflective of how the matchup goes on ladder, but you know, it goes to show that Control, War uh, Control Warlock is uh, more than comfortable. And you can see why, right? We've seen a similar thing with Control Warrior being played out in this matchup, where it's deal with a few waves of threats and then you're probably there, right? Because with the lack of card draw, that uh, is available to Rush Warrior. You kind of just run the, have to run them out of resources a few times with a couple of decent AoEs and then maybe a Twisting Nether yep. to round it all out. And, and then you should be able to get there. And honestly, outside of what, Militia, you don't really play any minions that you care if they're rushed into anyway. And a lot yeah. of the time, you don't have any minions on board regardless. So again, the, the benefit of having a rush deck is kind of just automatically negated by you being Warlock in this instance. So... Yeah, it might be a tough one for Tice. He is starting to stack up a decent amount of pressure, but right now you can already see he's got a lot of a lot on his mind to see where he even wants to swing this weapon. And outside of um, a couple of individual minions, everything is very understated because it either has Rush or a powerful battle cry, right? Which is where conditioning comes in. But again, if you don't play that much card draw, it's hard to reliably hit conditioning in a large number of games. Um, so if you don't hit you know, rank 2 conditioning twice on the majority of your minions, it does often feel like when you come up against a very heavy control deck on the other side um, that they can exhaust you with threats over and over and over. So I think Tice will be looking for one of those conditionings to come into his hand very rapidly. He does have Playmaker though, it's worth saying, which I think is another one of the really key cards in these kinds of matchups. Yeah, he's going to be going for it already with this Murloc, uh, with the Crab Rider play. I'm surprised he's used it on this specifically. I think Playmaker sometimes can be worth saving, but 
this is putting forward a pretty dangerous board that requires an answer. And I do like him just being as aggressive as humanly possible here, just really going for the throat. Hysteria has a nice 50-50 outcome here on the full clear, but either way, the playmaker is going to die. Yeah, Wama gets the bad outcome, but again, key point there. He was considering using Siphon that turn, right? And he would have just siphoned the playmaker. So right. picking up Hysteria was just kind of a better solution. Okay, well, Tais is just well and truly just a condition away from a good time right now, as that is simply a lot of minions. Oh, Cascading is a very clutch pickup here. Because yep. now that means he can siphon to just relieve a little bit of pressure this turn. He has a five fragment militia juiced up for the following turn. Uh, and then not only will he have Ticketus juiced, but if he was to play those two cards I just mentioned, Militia and then Ticketus, that will be the triple corrupt on his Cascading Disaster, which you know then becomes probably the best removal card in the entire game at that point. Four mana, destroy three minions. Will be very interesting because now there's a kind of weird back and forth going where w if Wama played Militia, oh sorry, if Tice left a relatively low threat board down this turn, would Wama even play Militia at that point? It's a good question. I think because he hasn't really seen significant hand buffs, he would. Um, but if he had seen, like, a couple of run thacks or a rank 2 conditioning or something come down, then he'd be scared of, like, Big Blade Master coming out in response right. to his um, militia. Okay, I think Sol's gone again. Oh, yeah, I will go on top of that, of Blade Master and even just value oh. trades, right? Oh, Sol's kind of coming back. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> He's leaving me. Hey, though. Wama is facing down one of those low impact boards and is deciding to just drop Militia and already you see the nod from Tice as he quite clearly has a plan. He has Parade Leader, has two Dark Moon Riders right now, so that's two easy trades can happen if he wants to go down that route. Otherwise, he would just go for potentially run Thack this turn to go into the 3-3 three, three or the Militia and then follow up with the Dark Moon Riders or something else next turn as well. Actually, looking at this, how many cards do you have? Three? Okay, you can't quite get off the full value of, say, playing the uh, bumper car, trading that in, and then going for run back to buff even more minions. He's going to be able to clear the board off, though. And this run thack, as I mentioned earlier, has buffed an absolute ton of minions in hand. And big minions as well. Double Tent Trasher are just huge minions that will require along the lines of a Siphon Soul or Cascading to deal with. The Drain Souls won't really do enough damage either. Wama now, though, gets to drop down that Ticketus. And you can see, with this Drain Soul he does have in hand, now the Cascading is extra buffed. The Flesh Giant's there to come down to pile on pressure. Maybe he gets enough Wiggle Room to drop down Jaraxxus as well. Worst case scenario, if Tice puts on a big push here, this turn, or maybe even next turn, there is that emergency button of Twisting Nether, too, to be able to just completely destroy the board. So Tais definitely has decisions to make right now as to whether he wants to just do enough to leave a threat or two on board or whether he wants to really commit here and go as wide as possible and say, you know what, Wama, you don't have any more AoE. The militia's gone. You've already used up some removal and some spot removal like that Drain Soul and the uh, Soul Shit we saw earlier on in the game. And again, this might actually just be low enough threat to to just press Jaraxxus and go. It's only seven damage. Obviously, Jaraxxus now gains you eight armor. I, I think the only question Wama will be really considering is does he feel like he needs life tap still for a while and then the 6-6s six might not be good enough against Rush, but I think that would be a stretch and Wama seems to agree as he does drop down that Taraxxus, pushes the three damage, there's plenty of charges on that weapon to keep going anyway. And now it's the almost classic 
turn of Twisting Nether Hero Power with Jaraxxus in hand is huge for Warmer here. And you can see Ty's committing a lot to this board and it's just going to be wiped away. Warmer will end the turn with a 6-6 six, six if he wants to go for that. And if he draws a Soul Fragment, he'll be able to end the turn with a Flesh Giant as well, as he will get that heal. And he gets it! The nod from Warmer. He can now drop Twisting Nether, Flesh Giant, Hero Power, and I honestly don't know what Tyus can do in response. He's got the Alexstrasza to be able to kill off one of these things, the Flesh Giant, of course, but that as a whole turn is not looking like it's good enough when you know there are more weapon swings coming, there are more 6-6s six being summoned by Warmer, as well as the cards he already has in hand, which we can see, of course, is that hard removal, right? The Cascading Disaster, the Siphon Soul, even the school spirits times two if Tice wants to go wide. So it's going to be an uphill climb here. And Salt did mention earlier before he um, left us for a bit while he's sorting some connection issues out somewhere that at least in GM, Warlock has been dominating this matchup. And it looks like he's uh, it's going to get it done once more. All pressure on Tice now. This draw needs to be pretty magnificent. And, and suddenly one of the strongest late game tools in Tice's deck does not look like it really does anything versus this board. Two 6-6 six, six Infernals there. The weapon for an additional three. Ah, can Tice even do anything here? Now. No. Just admitting defeat there. He needs, yeah, it's just not enough, right? It's just going to be too much damage. Tice concedes, gives the win over to Warmer, and once again, we see Warmer taking pretty solid wins with this lineup against Rush Warrior yesterday. I believe Warmer uh, took two wins out of three wins he had for his series victory uh, against Rush Warrior with different decks, so everything looking pretty strong overall. And I think, like, this was the big turn, as ever, right, against any deck that's focused on board. If you can land Militia, get some value trades, make your opponent react, and then just build off that. And with that Twisting Nether in, in the pocket there for Warmer, he knew he was safe at any given point. Got the Draxus down safely, and it was all going to be downhill from there for Ty's. Just no big conditionings there to really fight back on board. These Infernals were just too big and too early in the game, really, for Ty's to deal with them. And that means the series is going to go to a 2-1 score so far for Warmer. And that means he does just have his Control Warrior left with over to uh, take a victory over Tice. And he is going to be lining that up initially, at least, into Tice's Rush Warrior once again. We do get to see the deck here is, of course, that Cthulhu list we saw earlier on. Uh, big points against the Rush Warrior is it's a kind of a strange matchup, actually, because it's just all the removal that the control warrior has going up against all of the threats that the rush warrior has and i think a lot of it does rely on doing the old school things right like against Warmer's Warrior. Tice needs to put on enough threats to not play into the brawls. It's got to be mindful of Blade Storms. Got to worry about that one Barrow turn. But again, with the double coerce there for Warmer, he does have a ton of tools to deal with all the different shapes that a uh, board Tice can play. The big deal, though, is will Warmer draw fast enough to deal with those on curve? Because we've seen uh, historically from Rush Warrior that it is fairly consistent in putting threats down however they want them. So it's going to be definitely a strange matchup and one we've not seen too often, at least in the European Grandmasters. But let's just dive straight in here. Warmer only keeping hold of that Venomous Scorpid, giving him at least a nice early turn and uh, opening up some options with that Discover. Okay, Minefield's not too bad either. Tice, on the other hand, has the Ganag on one. But the rest of his hand is not playing too nicely. ETC, although technically a two drop, of course, and something to play on two, is not really what he's looking for here. I wonder if Tice is even going to play this ETC out. I don't think, again, in this matchup, you can expect ETC to do tons of damage. It's not like you can 
collect all these rush minions and guarantee something to throw it uh, throw against them later on versus Warmer. I wonder. But it does look like he is pondering this a lot, honestly, with ETC. I do think Sotl might be back. Welcome, friend. Hello. How's your mini Hello, vacation? Ray. I have returned. Yeah, I appear to be having some internet, uh, intermittent internet instability issues, uh, which there's not really a lot I can do about. So I've just given it the old <laughs> turn it back, turn it off and turn it back on again treatment. I mean, that doesn't work. It's the best kind of stuff. treatment. It is uh, the best kind of streaming. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, so basically, uh, Wama just about managed to land the old safe enough Duraxus into twisting nether hero power, and it all went downhill from there uh, against Ty. So he won that matchup. Warlock continues to dominate Rush Warrior, and now we are into Control Warrior versus the Rush variant from Ty. here. bones just keep moving. Again, we saw this was a matchup where Wama and Control Warrior in general has done okay throughout uh, Grand Masters so far. So again, clearly, big talking point for the, the lineup here is that Wama's kind of nodding, honestly, and he kind of has that feeling of, this is actually going better than I expected. Yeah, and, and going into this match when I was breaking it down, the, the main concern I mentioned was that sometimes Control Warrior draws a little bit too slowly, and if he doesn't draw the correct removal for the correct type of board that Tice has, then that's where it can fall down a little bit. But outside of that, already you can see there's enough answers, right? A Scorpion that's playable, Shield Maid and Shield Slam for a bit later. There is a blade storm there too. So Wama well, seems to be in a, a lot of control right now in Tice. I don't know. Pretty much needs Watley at this point. What now? It's kind of already getting there, right? Mm. The more I look at these hands, these opening hands from Control Warrior, every time South Sea Scoundrel comes in to one of these control decks from Wama, I really like the look of it, right? Because it just allows Wama to capitalize on these starts he has, where, you know, most of his control decks do play one drops, so they can, you know, start reasonably fast on turn one. But they just give him this power curve, right? That he's able to hit in his control deck, where he can actually just take board early by playing big stats. Really starting to get more and more impressed by these, uh, these South Sea Scoundrels. Yeah, soon. You will also tweet out that it's strictly the best card ever made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From another influential person who's never achieved anything in Hearthstone. <laughs> <Armor. laughs> armor. Okay. Uh, that's a big deal. Yep, conditioning's a thing. That helps. Stage dive already corrupted, so he's going to get to fully juice up this Crab Rider. Just so low on resources already. Start to line up this hand from Tice against the removal we can already see from Wama. Two Scorpids, which basically kill a minion as soon as this War Axe is gone. And then Shield Slam and Bladestorm with 11 armor stacked up already. Yeah. I mean, even just Hero Power Shield Slam here is insane. You can just drop a Scorpy Boy alongside that as well, which likely yeah. kills the next minion that Tice is wanting to play. Just take another Blade Storm. Is Warmer's line up the nuts? Like, has I, he just done it, Raven? I mean, I said it when we saw him yesterday, right? I just, just looking at it and actually watching it being played, you just think, yeah, this is just pretty good. I think especially this Warrior, as it probably impressed me the most. Oh, don't make Control Warrior good again. No one likes Control Warrior. Come on. Mm -hmm. But at least you do stuff, right? Like that, okay, like no. you, you play South Sea Scoundrel. That's a full man of 5 5. Sounds like that girl <laughs> to me, Sol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's only, what, two steps away from being a full man of 7 7. Exactly. Oh. Wait a minute. What's the correct choice? <laughs> so if you take Troublemaker here, Tice has the option to jam Troublemaker on curve, but I literally don't care. Yeah, no, I yes, love this. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I was getting to as well, is that if I'm Wama, I want a Troublemaker regardless of what Tice does next turn. Completely agree, yeah. 
Um, whereas the other option was, so you had three options there, right? You had, you kind of had mummy, but mama bear, daddy bear, baby bear of the picks, right? Where you could have taken Ganag, and then both of you have a bad card that neither of you want. What you could have taken Watley, which would have just been the outright throw because that's just a bad card for Wama and the absolute nuts for Tice. Or there was the uh, the the other option with the troublemaker, where you both just have a bad card. And weirdly, normally in those situations, it's bad to do that because you give your opponent initiative with the bad card with the. Good card, but Wama has so much initiative himself already right. that he actually gets to get usage out of the Troublemaker first in most scenarios. And all I want to see right now is Troublemaker, both 3 threes going to both Scorpids. It will just be satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's potentially a game winning play from this point, honestly, if it does happen. I'm just going to give it up. Wow. Tice just wants to see Troublemaker come down and then potentially have the big swing back with the uh, Blade Master in response to it, but it is just going to be a ton of damage that he ends up tanking here in response. I told you, it's an aggro deck. It is just an aggro deck. You're absolutely right. This cleans up now, right, because it's a 4-9 Blade Master, so he can just thwack it into the Troublemaker on the other side. But I think he can just quite visibly tell that Wama's just nodding like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Like, no problem. Yeah. Like, half yeah. of these minions are minions that I don't care about anyway. <laughs> like, great. And he has still has two, sorry, three Blade Storms in hand. Corsair Cash he got as well, which is going to be useful, just whether he gets his uh, Outrider's Axe or a the Bulwark. Probably values the yeah. Outrider Axe a lot more highly. Yes, I agree. I think he will massively favor Outrider's Axe in this position. I do wonder about Wama's previous turn, though, where he did just slam uh, Troublemaker. No, you're right in that he's reacting to the Blade Master in a sort of, well, so what kind of way. But what happens if he just passes? Or if he just jams Eye of Cthulhu and deals seven and just hits face with his 5-5 five five and his 2 one threes and says, well, I'm winning this game of chicken. Like, right. Tice is I, definitely the person that had to do something in that spot. I guess the assumption is that it would have only been a buffed Blade Master that ruins that turn, right? Like, outside of that. It's probably but your fine. opponent eight mana passed on the previous turn. Like, what else does that mean, right? Surely, He's especially when everyone has <laughs> everyone has that much knowledge of what the hands are because the troublemaker was just passed right. back and forth. Like, I think it had to have meant exactly Blade Master, right? But Wama was was clearly just comfortable with the scenario. And the old armor smith brawl, kind of. <laughs> Wins every time, right? No, 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 no. Oh. Different, diff no, yeah, yeah, different spot in the supply chain. You have to make <laughs> the armor in order to win brawls. You can't just uh. sell the armor to other people. It just doesn't work like that. Can I go for Samuro, which is interesting, kind of relying on more uh, getting the second conditioning or some kind of hand buff. I think he... Mm. Interesting. I think I would have just played Ralcor there, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't have hated it. Certainly wouldn't have hated it. Yeah, like, there's Bulwark, there's then the Prime, there's Blade Storms. Like, just drop Ray Rattlegor and be like, yeah, trade into this 100 times, go for it. I think if he hadn't have used the Brawl on the previous turn, he absolutely would have, right? Because that's when you talk about the game I didn't see, when it was safe Jaraxxus into Twisting Nether Hero yes, Power. Yeah. That's the same play, but Control Warrior version, right? right. It's safe Rattlegor into Brawl. Um, but because he doesn't have the universal kill switch to throw out afterwards, I think he's just a little bit scared. And he's saying, well, there was an 8-8 in play. There's not going to be something scarier than an 8-8 in play next turn, right? When I play the Rattle Core. <laughs> right? Right? I mean, to be fair, he has double blade star. Maybe he just doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, eventually he'll get there, right? He'll find a spot for Rattle Core, whether it's now or later. And even if he does end up playing it now into a bigger minion, it's still not strictly correct, right? Like, you can still speculate about something and then right. not hit it and then just say, all right, fine, whatever. Rattlegore it is. I'm not too young to fight. And pretty quickly, you can see what mindset Tice has here. All damage, all face, end this game quickly. 
Yep. Bulwark of Azanoth is going to have something to say about that. Rancor is going to have something to say about that. Bladestorm is going to have something to say about that. There's so much in the way between Tice and any kind of face plan coming together here. And jeez, oh, and <laughs> and this is what's been impressing me the most is like, Wama has all these answers. Andy played a lot of threats. He nearly just killed Tice. <laughs> Andy yeah. has all these controls. Is this just the ultimate deck? Is this Don't the unicorn priest? These things, Raven. The unicorn priest. It was while you were all along. These things. <laughs> yeah, Tyson's face kind of sums this up, right? Like, what is he supposed to do? Yeah. He's losing by resources, he's losing on board, he's losing on health, and what cards are actually are even left in the deck that will make an impact on this game, I genuinely don't really know. Playmaker, second troublemaker, I mean, we can have a dig to see what's left, but there's not a great deal. Uh, that Playmaker can pump out a lot of 1-1s from the bumper car, right? Wherein he can then get a bunch of value out of ETC if he was getting closer to lethal. The troublemaker is obviously- Okay, opinion. that's a good one. Outside of that though, it is just the conditioning itself. Yeah, exactly. But it still doesn't really seem like it's gonna be enough to get anything done here. I think starting two turns ago, he needed like runner, runner, parade leader and uh, playmaker, right? And then he just has a huge swing turn where he puts like 30 one ones in his hand and breaks the rules of Hearthstone. Right. And then he gets to do something with, uh, with ETC on the following turn. Me. Weirdly enough, like, Wama would benefit from Rattlegar being smaller now, right? <laughs> Wait, how come? Uh, purely for the, um, so the bumper cars don't die when they rush into it, right? So mm. he can't chain the ETC, like, bumper car, bumper car, one, 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 so on. I see. I mean, it's probably not gonna matter, as Ty says, such power and concedes the game. And that means Tyus takes a loss here and he's no longer able to get into that top two spot, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, Soto. But it does mean that Wam has got that chance now if he can win in the next and final match. You are not wrong. It means our top two is now Yala and either RDU or Wama, depending on the outcome of this final match. And it is now that dream scenario, at least for me, that I was talking about earlier, where we have a final between two players with something very real on the line, and it's a positive outcome. It's you <laughs> yeah. must win, and then you get this reward for winning uh, for both of the players, which I, I think is a great way to end out week seven of the regular season and really put us in the, the right mind frame going forward to play playoffs next week. Uh, Wama is fighting for top two so he can get that premium seeding so he gets that free win, gets deeper in the bracket, whereas Blyze is just fighting to make playoffs in this fight, right. which is, you know, a huge achievement for him. Started off the season well enough, uh, but then had a loss of form and a loss of points for uh, breaking the rules um, throughout the, the middle of the season, which meant that he was in a little bit of relegation trouble going into the final few weeks, but now has the chance to end his season on a high. Yeah, and, and uh, as you mentioned, these rewards that are available for you know one the winner of this next match are both incredibly huge. It's the ability to potentially make it to world, which is of course the goal for every player here, or 